I, I guess what I'd like to do is uh, just to lob a few questions and, and, uh, and start immediately engaging the audience. Um, let me ask the audience this. Who is using Twitter? Wow, that's quite a few. And who is on Facebook? Wow, quite a few. And who's on LinkedIn? And uh, so how many of you out in the audience use uh, Twitter or Facebook for your clients? That's quite a few. So maybe uh, cl clearly there's been incredible adoption of social media to communicate messages and manage reputation. And I'm wondering if we can go through uh, the group uh, and, and ask each panelist to, to talk a little bit about how they have uh, deployed social media to communicate the, their firm's message. You know, we've already heard from Gary, told you that GE has a blog. Um, Barbara talked a lot about uh, actually Twittering messages to correct an erroneous Wall Street Journal account. Uh, Ray, did you use Twitter to publicize the latest Pfizer announcement? Uh, we did, actually, yesterday. Um, both Twitter, uh, Facebook, major blogs. We have, have to be quite careful, though, too, because since we are a heavily regulated industry, what we say has got to be highly consistent with what we're saying to all other stakeholders. Uh, that does become a challenge when folks start responding back to us, uh, because obviously you can't just go in and get out and run away. So um, I, I always like to tell folks, uh, if it's a scale of one to 10, we're at about a two right now, but two is better than zero, which was last year, and I think I, if I get myself to a five, I'll be happy on that, on that scale of social media, because folks are going to very distinct places to get their information on health and we have got to be there. And the last comment I'll make about that is this. Uh, I think the challenge in the pharmaceutical industry in the past has been, we don't want to talk to you, okay? Go talk to your doctor, go talk to somebody else. But I think the position that we're taking is, if you're gonna trust us to ingest our products into your bodies, okay? You're not getting in a car and driving it, you're in putting it inside your body. That, that is the most significant level of trust you're ever gonna have then we should trust you enough to give you the information you need to make your right decisions. But it has to be done in a very distinct way with your physician as part of the dialogue. So social media is very important to us, but how it's done is even more important. So because of the conversational nature of that medium, do you in fact do respond to people or not? Is it one way communication? No, it's, it's two-way, but again, I, I just want to caution that we're doing it in a very specific way. So let's give you uh, an example. Um, we started early on, there's a place called Sermo where all the physicians go. There's tens of thousands of physicians in this one community. And originally we went in and um, we had one of our senior medical guys talking as a marketer. And man, did he get his head handed to him. He got nailed to the wall and um, be amazed at how foul uh, physicians can actually be with their language online. <laughs> And um, this particular uh, uh, medical person works for us, who he's a terrific, terrific fella. He basically said, all right, I'm doing it my way now. And he went in and spoke as a physician and had a physician to physician conversation and spoke in the language that doctors speak in. And that was an eye opening experience for us. And that just happened about 12 months ago. So this is why I say, look, we're, we're, we're trying, we're down here and we want to get a little better at this darn thing. But each of these experiences is teaching us more and more but we cannot walk away from the conversation. And, and I think that's where we are, whether it be online, whether it be with our policy folks, regulatory, media, we have to be part of the conversation. And in the past, I think our industry has chosen not to be so. And I'll leave with this last piece. When I first arrived two years ago, um, I, I put a little note out to a few reporters that I know and trust, and I said, hey, listen, here's all the contacts for the top folks inside that'll handle communications for you. New York Times wrote back, and I'll never forget these words, he said, wow, Pfizer's finally raising the great big blue wall of silence. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, you're talking about Twitter and Facebook, and I'm talking about first getting folks to understand that we'll actually have a conversation with you. So we've come a long way, we've got a long way to go, and um, you know, we're feeling quite good about it, and I think we're, we're quite proud of where we stand today. So Har Harvey, your, your business is under the probably the biggest attack right now, right? Um, you are, you've become Obama's uh, favorite <laughs> kicking boy. And I'm wondering, how do you get in front of that? Do, do, you, do you utilize social media to get in front of it? Are you proactive um, in it? Or are you just taking the punches and trying to respond? What, what's the strategy? Well, first, if you'll permit me, and with great deference, 
uh, let me just correct the record. According to the latest reputation list that I've seen, uh, we are actually not in the last position. <laughs> We're next to last. <laughs> Automobile dealerships. No, tobacco company. Oh, okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, not as dire and and you know what I always tell my team is that um, it's good to have issues to deal with because if we didn't have these very rich compelling issues that have the opportunity to really impact share price in our business you know there might not be such a need for public relations people so um, you know I think um, many of us really thrive in this environment i know i do i think you know these are issues that we can relate to as professionals we can relate to them as individuals because we're all affected by the credit crunch and how we use our credit cards um, the social media uh, i think that one mistake some companies make is that uh, they regard it as an objective a strategic objective whereas I think it's more of a tactic because uh, some people some entities I think have begun to overuse it because it's the technology du jour um, I think it's a very important tactic depending on what your objectives are our objective in this reputational uh, you know, crunch is to get our story out to more people we recognize that a wider variety of stakeholders exists almost every day because people are linked together through Web 2.0 technology. Um, and the only way we are going to reach these disparate groups and um, from public policy groups to grassroots citizens to think tanks to, uh, the, to academia, the professors, economists who are coming out with different models for the credit card industry, um, you do have to not only reach them, but you have to engage with them. So we have, um, and this has been a pretty conservative company. I was hired from IBM to come in about three years ago to help them go public. It had been a private association up until just three years ago. So being a public company is very new for MasterCard. And it's taken about uh, two, two and a half years to get us into the social media as a tactic. We are blogging, podcasting, uh, we have begun to Twitter. Um, we think it's important to respond to some of the issues that are raised, and the only way to do that instantaneously within the same news cycle that the allegation has been lobbed at us is to do it very quickly in a very transparent way. So yes, you know, we're using social media as a tactic to engage. You know, one of the things that I'm looking forward to is more direct engagement with our direct opponents. You know, the merchants association, the retail associations, uh, the associations, you know, who are fighting us on not just credit card bad practices, but the whole interchange model, the four-party system that allows credit card tra transactions to work so well. Uh, we're looking, we're, we're using the social media as a tactic to engage. Thanks. So, so Gary, do you have guidelines on what to blog and what not to blog? And 